In this video, I'm going to show you real quick how to install some routes inside of the routing table using Packet Tracer. What I have here is two 184100 series routers, and I'm going to connect their WAN link on the 192.168.20 network. The LAN interface of this first router is going to be on the 192.168.10 network, and the LAN interface of router 2 is going to be on the 192.168.30 network. First thing I need to do with these routers is add some serial cards. So I'm going to power it off. I'm going to choose the WIC 1T and put it into the first slot. Power it back on. Same thing on this router. Power it off. Add the WIC 1T and power it back on. Now I'm going to connect those two routers with the serial cable. One side must be the DCE to provide the clocking and the other end will be our DTE. In between a PC and a router, that is a crossover cable. I'll go from my fast Ethernet to my fast Ethernet 0. And same thing over here. All right, I'm going to go to this first router here. Go to the command line. Enter no to setup mode and return to get started. Get into enable mode, I'm just going to show you that the routing table right now is blank. So what I want to do is I want to configure my interfaces. You remember with directly connected networks, as soon as you configure your interfaces and turn them on, you will now have routes to those networks inside of the routing table. So I'm going to get into my interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0, given an IP address inside of that 192.168. one network, add the subnet mask on there, I'm getting cut off here a little bit, turn it on by doing the no shutdown, I'm also going to get into my interface serial, it was 0 slash 1 slash 0, Give this one an IP address in the 2 network. Oh, I forgot the uh, clock rate on that serial, so let me get back into that real quick. Since it was the DC, DCE, I must provide a clock rate. You can see right now that the directly connected fast Ethernet got entered. The serial did not get entered yet because the other end of it is not currently on. If I take a look at these links here, they're, they're still red, but the green one is on, is connected. So that automatically put in that directly connected network into this router. Do the same thing over here on this router. No to setup mode. Notice the routing table is blank. Get into global configuration and enter my IP address on my fast Ethernet. This one's on the three network. Turn on the interface, also the serial. Turn that on as well. Take a look at the routing table here. Notice I now have the 2 network and the 3 network directly connected in the routing table. That's this network here. So he's directly connected to this 2 network. He's also directly connected to this 3 network. And those are both in the routing table. And that makes sense. We can get over to this router here. And we can get over to this PC here. If I take a look at this router. 
he can get to the 1, 0, and the 2, 0. So we can now get to the 1, 0 over here. So we can get to PC, 0. And he can get to router 2 because he can get to the 2, 0. Both of those are, both of those are directly connected. Notice that router 0 does not have a route to the 3, 0 network. So router 0 could not get over here to this fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. It could not get to PC1. One way in which we can do that is with a static route. And I'm going to show you how to, how to enter in that static route. We will go over this in more detail in Chapter 2, but just to show you real quick how it works. To do a static route, you're in global configuration. You do an IP route, the network you want to get to. In this case, we want to get to the 3.0 network. The subnet mask of that network. And then either the outgoing interface or the next hop address. I'm going to do the outgoing interface here. And the outgoing interface is the serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. Take a look at the routing table. I now have an S here, static route, 192.168.3.0. It's directly connected to that serial 0, 1, 0, meaning that if we need to get to the 3.0 network, what we're going to do is we're going to send it out this serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. This router here does not have a network, or does not have a route to the 1, 0 network, so I'm going to enter a static route into this one. And I'm going to do this one with the next hop address. I get into global configuration. I do an IP route. The route of the or the network that I want to get to, 192.168.1.0, because this is what I do not have. Subnet mask. And the next hop address. For my next hop address, I need to do a little work here. I need to figure out where I would send to next. Well, for router 2 to get to the 1, 0 network, what he would have to do is send over to router 0. So I need to figure out what the IP address is of this interface, my serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. And my serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 is 192.168.2.1. That's what I type in to the command here. I know I'm getting cut off, but I am typing 192.168. 2.1. So if I take a look at the routing table on this side, I can see that a static route has been entered, and it's saying to get to the 192.168.1.0 network, we send the next hop address of the 192.168.2.1. What the router would have to do in this situation is do a recursive lookup. Okay, we know we have to send to the 2.1. Well, the 2.1 is on the 2 network. And to get to the 2 network, we send to the serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. So there's a second look up there. We're using the next top address, but it will still work just fine. Another way we can enter in routes is to do them dynamically. And I'm just going to show you real quick on how that would work. Get into config T, and I'm going to show you router rip. Router rip is one of, one of the dynamic routing protocols that you can use. You type in router rip, the name of your or the IP addresses of your directly connected networks. So my directly connected are my ones with my C's. I have a 2, 0. And I have a 3, 0 directly connected. And I would do that for each router, and they would exchange information, and the routes would be put in there automatically. Um, we'll get to RIP and RIP version 2 and EIGRP and OSPF in, in later chapters, but that's just one way in which a dynamic routing protocol can be entered. Thanks for watching the video.